recording this computer. Here we go. Hey, it's Johnny Jet, and we're doing 39 questions. And today is with Darlie Newman. And you probably know her from her PBS show called Travels with Darlie. Is that correct? It is. And I, I've had the show Equa Trucking for a long time, too. A lot of people know me from that, from all of my equestrian adventures. So. And, you, and you won, I read that you won three Emmys? Uh, yeah, Equa Trucking won three Daytime Emmy Awards. I've been nominated for a bunch. So, yeah, we got some acclaim with riding horses around the world. Who knew? I mean, that's amazing. I mean, that really is amazing. So, congratulations. So, we're going to do these 39 questions. They could be rapid fire. So, this interview could be five minutes or it could be 30. Okay. But hopefully, we'll be a little bit on the shorter end since um, we're both pressed for time today. And if you don't feel comfortable answering any of these questions, just say pass. Okay. okay. I know you're going to ask me some uncomfortable questions, John. Yes, that's what I do. I'm here for the hardball <laughs> questions. These are going to be some fastballs coming at you. Okay. All right. You ready? Ready. Question number one. Um, so what's your occupation? I'm a TV host entrepreneur, I would say. Yeah. Hosting travel shows, running websites, talking about travel, all that kind of stuff. All right. And how are you doing right now with the quarantine? Getting a little frantic. I mean, it's, it's tough being inside a lot. Um, I'm in New York City, so it's very different here right now. I'm right by Central Park, which is a godsend, but I'm really ready to get back on the road like all of us. I'm with you. So can you go for walks in Central Park? Yeah, I actually just went for a little jog right before our conversation today. I've been, I've been jogging almost every day just because I want to get outside, so... Yeah, it's just, it's very different, you know, but there's actually room to run, so that's good. Not as many cars on the streets, not as many people out, so take a quick run, get some air, and come back, come back inside. Everyone wearing masks? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. All right, so now we know where you live, so how, where'd you grow up? Uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I'm a beach kid. Well, yeah. Awesome. I've been there once, beautiful place. Oh, I love it. I always say I'm an East Coast kid, though, because I did Myrtle Beach. I was in Richmond, Virginia for high school, D.C., came up to New York, back to D.C., back to New York. So I'm just going up and down the coast. And I need to get out to of L.A. Um, George Washington University in D.C. And what did you study? Um, I did electronic media, so radio and television with a minor in international business and cultures. I created my own minor so I could study abroad. And, yeah, I loved it. You're a smart girl. <laughs> Um, so what's your earliest travel memory? So we took a trip to California, my entire family. Um, it was a sad occasion. My grandfather had passed away and he wanted his ashes spread in different places that meant something to him. So it was actually a really cool trip, but it was my first time going to the West Coast. We were all over San Francisco. I fell asleep under a table in a Chinatown restaurant and saw the Golden Gate Bridge and just, it really, really stuck with me. Wow. How old were you? I think I was five or six at that point. So yeah, early West Coast adventure. And how often do you fly now or pre-COVID? I was, you know, I traveled so, I've traveled so much over the past few years. I've been gone about probably two weeks a month, which this past year, it was like, it was a little too much. I was kind of ready to explore New York a bit more. And now I'm in New York all the time and I can't really explore. So it's kind of a catch 22, right. but yeah, a lot of travel over the past decade. And how many countries do you think you've been to? Um, I've, I think I've, I tallied them up the other day. I think I've been to 37 so far. So and how about how many continents? Um, five out of seven. I don't know when I'm getting to Antarctica, though. I was, I've been hearing about these different cruises. So we'll see. And so what's the sixth one? Is it Australia you haven't been to or Asia? I'm not been to Australia. No, I've not been to Australia. Okay. That's, that, I find that very surprising. I know. It's such a good place to ride horses, too. I need to get there. We're going to need to change that. Is your screen blinking or is it me? Um, I think I, I don't see it, but do you see it on your end? I did see that. I mean, you know, I, I could be seeing things. Who knows? But yeah, I do see it blinking. But um, hopefully it's not recording that way. Otherwise, I might be calling you back up tomorrow. Um, what's your uh, you favorite American listen? city? Um, well, I love New York City, and I actually, I love Los Angeles. I've been telling people I want to live in both cities and be bi-coastal. That would be, that'd be awesome. I think they're such good complements to each other. So those are, those are my faves. That's the way to go. What's your favorite international city? 
Um, I have to say Florence, Italy. It's where I studied abroad and I just, I fell in love with it. I lived with the family, made some of the best friends and of course drank great wine, had great food. And I've been back since and I just, I love Florence. I am. I've only been there once or twice, and it is a beautiful place. All right, how about where's the where are the friendliest people in the world? Um, that's there's friendly people in so many different places. Uh, I love Ireland. Ireland's probably one of the tops on my list. I just think people are so nice, and it's such a great experience to go into a random place and cozy up in a pub, have a Guinness, and just chat with people but i just i love the irish people and their personalities in general so I, they're super friendly I agree. As you, as you know. I, I, irish are amazing and uh, i told josh the other day when i did an interview with them i said that fiji and bali but i did forget ireland ireland the people are amazing yeah um all right so which place do you have no desire to go to um i do not want to do space travel <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to cut out outer space. I just don't want to. I, I don't know. I'm scared. It seems cold and dark. And I just love the earth so much that I'm, I think I'm just going to stay here. I'm not going to get into the space travel movement. I say that now, but who knows? Not that is the one. best answer. You will not piss anyone off. And, um, <laughs> and I agree with you. I, uh, I don't really have a desire but to go I space. don't like I don't like going to really hot places either. I mean, I've been doing a lot of hot travels, like a lot of places that are like hot, dry heat, humid heat you know, a lot of extremes, but I, if I can avoid it or avoid that time of the year, I will. So no, not too cold in outer space, not too hot in a desert somewhere. <laughs> All right. Which place has the, which country has the meanest immigration officers? Um, we've had troubles on the Canadian border a lot, just going back and forth filming. Uh, they're very strict. They're very they're strict. Going back. Yeah, that's a tough one. You're not alone. I agree with you. And so did uh, Josh Gates when I interviewed him last week. Yeah, they're so tough. They, the Canadians are tough. And I'm married to a Canadian. I love Canadians. But the, the Border Patrol um, is a tough one. How about, do you have a favorite airline? Um, you know, I don't really have a favorite airline. I've had some favorite airline experiences. Um, I really like the food on Japan Airlines. I thought the food was great. Um, I did Cutter in business class, and that was amazing. Can't beat that. And if I can get a sleep pod, I'm happy. <laughs> like, I, I loved, if I can lie down, I'm just, I'm a happy camper. So do you have a favorite aircraft type? Uh, again, I don't really. I mean, I like your classic 747. That's good for me. Um, but yeah, again, give me a little space. I've been, I went on an Air France flight and I literally got the smallest seat on the flight. It was, it barely fit my hips. I don't know what was going on. And I asked the, one of the flight attendants, I said, is this the smallest seat on the flight? And she was like, yes, I have to go back and look what airliner it was. It's some weird thing. There's a one seat that is small. Which, which, like yeah, which, row, which row was that? Do you remember? It was, um, it was the front row where you have no the bulkhead. Um, oh, the bulkhead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, like, I, I have to send you this picture if I can find it. Cause it was really, I was laughing so hard when I took a picture of myself. So I was like, I barely fit in this seat. This is crazy. Please send it. Cause I'll add it to this blog post. I'm going to make a blog post out of this video. Um, <laughs> how about, do you, are you an aisle or window type of person? It depends on how long the flight is. Um, I typically like aisle because I like to get up. But if I'm on a really long flight, I'll take the window so I can just snooze um, as you. long as possible. Yeah. Have you ever sat next to any famous celebrities? Not on a flight. Um, no. I, I, I run into, I, I see a lot of celebrities around New York, but, as, as, as you probably do in the LA area. But no, never on a flight. Okay. How about favorite airport lounge? Um, I would say probably the, um, Qatar Airlines or Qatar Airlines Doha lounge, which is huge yep. and amazing. Um, I, I like airport lounges with a good view though. I did Asiana in, um, Seoul, I believe. And yep. it was like, just looking out. I love to look out. If okay. I, if I can just see the planes going and coming, I think it's really just entertaining. I love that too. How about you have a favorite U.S. and international airport? Um, U.S. favorite airport. I really like National Airport in D.C., like old school. Yep. Uh, I used to fly in and out as a kid. My dad was always in the D.C. area. 
And I just have good memories. It's so manageable. It's easy. And for international, uh, again, I, I like certain things for very specific reasons, I feel like. And at Amsterdam Airport, I liked. I had a layover there once. It was really long. And I felt the food choices were awesome. Like, I think I ate at three restaurants. I was like, I'm just going to eat my way through this area. And the shopping was good, too. And you can buy tulips there in the, in the airport. <laughs> That's always tulip, a plus. Tulip bulbs to bring home. How about a can favorite you, hotel? Um. Favorite, again, I, I probably like uh, quaint or smaller hotels for the most part. I love Castle Leslie in Ireland. I always recommend that to people. Um, it's just one of those kind of the founding family that owns it is pretty eccentric. It's really cool to stay at a castle, but it feels very homey when you're there. Like the family is actually around and, and staying in, in different parts of the castle when you're there. Like one of the, the family members was playing piano and there's great riding and beautiful horses, which is nice, but uh, it's, it's just a beautiful place. Hey, staying in any castle sounds pretty good. Yeah. Uh, do you have a it's favorite a dream, travel right? credit card? Um, probably the Chase Sapphire, I think, is what I use mostly. Okay. But I'm also using a lot of things that give me money back in general now good on um, on my, and on, on my business card. So that I'm, I'm big into that. How about your favorite island favorite island um i got to do hawaii a couple of years ago and film there on maui and the big island and loved both of them just the diversity of outdoor adventure beautiful i i love to go to the beach but i also like to do things so i love that there was great hiking and you could go to the rainforest yeah. um the road to hana made me super sick but it was awesome so i i just and the food oh the oh, banana daiquiris good sushi yeah why is amazing. Uh, I, I'm wearing my Hawaiian shirt, my Aloha shirt. Oh my gosh, um, you are. Look at you. Maybe, that, maybe you gave me a little like nudge there, actually, Johnny. Possibly. How about you have a favorite beach? Um, well, I grew up in Myrtle Beach. I love Myrtle Beach. That might be one of my favorite. Um, I, really, I also like the Golden Isles down in Georgia. There's some beautiful beaches there, and a lot of the places are a little bit lesser visited sometimes. I mean, they can get crowded too. But Cumberland Island, which is a national park, national seashore, is really, really a neat location, and you have to get there by boat or ferry. Um, there's wild horses, beautiful beaches. There's a really cool inn there, the Grayfield Inn, which has a lot of history. It's beautiful, so... I can't, yeah, if I can get somewhere where Myrtle Beach is super packed, but then you can go to places that are just less, less packed, more wild. I'm a, I'm a fan of that. I'm down with that too. Uh, do you have a favorite fancy restaurant or, and, and, or a fancy hole in the wall? Not fancy hole in the wall, a hole in the wall or a fancy restaurant? Uh, well, I've eaten at some amazing places with some amazing chefs. I always say that the best meal I've ever had was in Belgium in a place called Nemur, it's called Air du Temps. And the chef there has won two Michelin stars. He's got a farm right on the property. He does a fusion of Belgian Korean cuisine. It's really interesting. And every dish comes out like a work of art, but it's so, so tasty. So that was the best meal I ever had. They don't take that many people in the restaurant at one time. It's very, very cool. Uh, for hole in the walls, I've eaten a lot. I wouldn't, there's, this is definitely not a hole in the wall, but I love Tim Ho Wan in Hong Kong. Great. The Michelin star inexpensive dim sum. I just love, I love food in Hong Kong in general and Tim Ho Wan's awesome. And I don't know if you, do you guys have one in LA? Cause we have one in New York now. We do. Yeah. Um, have you been? I have been the one in uh, LA uh, and I've been to the one in um, Taipei. Yeah. Super so I, good. I don't think I've been to the one in Hong Kong. The one in Hong Kong, I w I've been on uh, both of my recent trips. I, I made, I've made it a point to go there and just, I love it. So good. Those so what's your, what's your favorite food? I love, I'm a meat eater. I love a good steak. Um, it's probably a really good grilled steak is probably my all time favorite food. Um, actually tried to grill or do some steaks on my at home New York kitchen grill the other night. Didn't turn out the way I've had them in other places, but it was a, it was a nice experiment. I'm definitely cooking at home right now. And uh, yeah, if I can get a good steak, I'm, I'm a happy kid. And how about your favorite fruit? 
I'm a, I love all fruit. I eat almost every day to banana and or an apple, but I love kiwi and mango are probably some of my favorites. Uh, but yeah, I love, I'm, I, I'll eat any kind of fruit. Except for, um, is durian a fruit? Because that's one that I'm not a yeah. fan of. <laughs> no, I don't think many people are a fan, especially the smell, but yeah. um, I guess it, it doesn't taste that bad, but I'm not a fan. Yeah. So what is your um, craziest thing you've ever eaten? Oh my gosh. Um, I've eaten some crazy foods in a lot of different places. In Turkey, I'm tr it's called, I think it's Aron or Iron. Have you had it? It's the salted milk drink that, that, that is very popular. It's like a drink of choice in Cappadocia. But um, I had some homemade when I was riding from village to village and it was just like a little warm, a little too salty. And that was probably like just the most not pleasing to my stomach thing that I've ever had. Um, but I'm not a bizarre, a big bizarre foods eater. I, I've tried some different food, like street foods in a, diff a lot of different places. When I was on Jeju Island in South Korea recently, uh, had a lot of different seafood that I would have never have really tried before. But yeah, those like are, that's what? the what I'm trying to think like, well, octopus that was or? cool. No, I mean, oct I actually like octopus. Like I, I like some different things like that, but we, um, we actually, I went out with the women of Jeju Island and dove down and actually helped harvest seafood. So just things like, like sea urchin and things like that, I'm not a big fan. And I love sushi, don't get me wrong, but there's some things that are just a little too, a little too for Yeah, me. I'm with you on that. How about your favorite drink of choice on the ground and in the air? Um, I'm a wine drinker in general, and I love a good Sauvignon Blanc on the ground or in the air. Um, but I'll take the champagne if they give me a glass when I, when I get on board as well. All right. How about your favorite travel movie? Under the Tuscan Sun. I actually, I love French Kiss too. I'm a big fan of the romantic comedies. And if you can add travel into it, I'm totally sold. All right. How about your favorite travel TV show besides your own? So uh, I don't know if you would call this travel, but I, I do. House Hunters International, I love. I feel like it's a travel show. I love to see inside people's homes and uh, see the kitchens, the bathrooms, how other people are living, cooking. So that's one of my, my all-time favorites. It's, it's travel, but it's not travel. But I, I mean, I've watched Bourdain. I've watched Samantha that's Brown. That's a travel show. That, that counts. Yeah. yeah. How about your favorite travel book? I've read uh, all of Bill Bryson's books. I think they're hilarious. Yep. Uh, Peter Mao. Uh, but also Peter Allison, there's this book called Whatever You Do, Don't Run. It's the life of a safari guide. And I read it right before I was going on safari, literally while I was on the flight and I was laughing the entire way. So I definitely recommend that to people. It's I had really to, I had to check that one out. I read Bill Bryson's, uh, the Australian one, which is hilarious. Oh yeah. He's <laughs> so funny. How about your uh, favorite travel app? I use Uber all the time. I'm, I'm getting more and more into Airbnb. I've actually used Airbnb in the LA area and stayed, I've stayed in Venice beach in some, in a really, one really cool place. I'm not even going to mention it cause I think it, I don't want it to get popular, but <laughs> yeah, no, I do like staying in, in home settings if I can. And if I have enough time, if I'm in for a night or two nights or, you know, not a long time, I, I'll just stay in a hotel probably. But if I have a little longer, I do like to stay in a place and feel like a local. So uh, and I like surfing around on Airbnb and just seeing what's available. It's kind of fun. Cool. And what do you always seem to forget when you travel? Toothbrush. That's toothbrush. why the hotels all give you toothbrushes. I know. Yeah. I, well, and now I, I have a, like this bag that I always have ready for travel. And so I, I have an extra toothbrush in there now consistently. I just do because I've forgotten mine so many times. And what was your worst travel moment? Uh, I was charged by an elephant in Botswana, Africa. It was a mock charge. I was not hurt, but we were horseback riding and we went on, we were going island to island in the Okavango Delta. And we went across this one small island and this bull elephant was not happy about our presence. He was munching on some jackal berries and decided that he would 
check us out. And it was, it was a mock charge, but he got pretty close. We actually have this in our episode, which is crazy. And two people fell off their horses. I stayed on my horse, but it was literally the most scary thing that's ever happened. And the rest of that trip, I was not getting near any, any, I mean, not, we weren't getting near an elephant on purpose anyway, but I was like, they would, we would see an elephant in the distance and he'd be like, look, an elephant. I was like, oh, we're going the other way now. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy. That does sound pretty scary. So what was your most embarrassing travel moment? I was ill, like with stomach issues in Jordan. And we were heading into the desert to do, we were going to camp for a couple of days. And I just, it was just an uncomfortable, horrible, hot, embarrassing, like, you're like, I need to find a restroom, but there's nowhere to go because now I'm like in the desert. (laughs) It was horrible. (laughs) I I, I believe it. I I would be like, I'm not going. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I, you do when you're shooting. What's your uh, favorite? What's your dream destination? I do want to get to Australia. That is definitely on my list. Um, one of my good friends and colleagues is was born in Australia. She's from Australia. I've heard so much about it. So that's it's you know it's a huge country. But if I can get there and at least start to do some exploring, if you have any tips, let me know. I have plenty. I've been many times, and I and I would have lost a lot of money if someone said, you know. Dolly's never been. I'm like, you're crazy. I'll bet you anything. She's not like, crazy. Yeah. yeah. So I got one more tip. I got one more tip. I got one more question for you. But before we go, how can people find you? So I am on social media at Darley Newman on Twitter and Instagram and LinkedIn and then travels with Darley on Facebook. And my website is DarleyCNewman.com. And you can look for my shows on PBS and Amazon Prime. And are you on YouTube? I am not really on YouTube. No. And well, actually, and I, I subscribed to your channel the other day. Well, good. Well, thank you. I was going to say. Yeah. When you sent out a thing, I was like, oh, let me subs-. But I, and I am watching more YouTube now than I have before, which is interesting. Right. So, yeah. Well, that's why during this whole coronavirus, I was like, you know what? I need to boost up my YouTube channel and start doing some more videos and Please, anyone out there, uh, if you're watching, please like this video and also subscribe because we're going to have some more. But we have one more. The most important question for Darley is, what is your best travel tip? My best travel tip is kind of a life tip, and it's just to roll with it. You know, not take anything. I've had, I've had some really scary and bad and you know, awesome and a mix of experiences in my life and on my travels. But I feel like if you always try to take things in stride as hard as it can be, even when you're dealing with a stressful situation, it's the best thing that you can do. And just, and looking at things in that way and being like, okay, well this happened, but I'm going to, you know, accept it and make the best of it. That's kind of my, my best tip because it'll make your trip so much better. And if you, you know, if you're lost, if you don't get stressed about it and you just decide, oh, I'm going to be late for this thing I was going to go to, but I'm just going to enjoy the surroundings while I find my way out of this area, um, then you can really, you can just change your trip in perspective. It's a great tip. Well, Darley, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to sit down and um, do these 39 questions. And I look forward to following you on social and on TV. And again, thank you very much for uh, joining. I'm going to end this and we can talk. Yeah, thanks for having me.